working on organization for sure. For sure. Um, all of those that were had remained here in Juneau are still trying to pull together an organization as quickly as possible. Um, it's fair to say that, uh, that all of our members recognize how important this is to to get ourselves organized, and uh, we definitely are here to represent the views of all Alaskans. That's that's our responsibility, and we all understand that. So it's my hope that we can wrap these conversations up very soon, and uh, get to work for the people of the state of Alaska for sure. Um, and you know, immediately following the organization of the House, we're, we're going to need to, to pivot rapidly to some very important discussions that we'll have about the operating budget, about public safety. Um, of course, there's been a lot of discussions about the permanent fund dividend and all those other things that we see that are going to be very important to Alaska, it's not only its immediate future, but its long-term future plans. So um, I'm confident uh, that we'll be able to do that soon. Um, we, we really want to move forward. That, that's, I think that's the whole message is we're, we're trying to move forward. I wanted to let everyone know that. I know um, I decided that a press conference might be a little bit easier and to schedule these on a regular basis rather than having you press folks come and try and make requests to me in the afternoon or in the early evening and try and make deadlines and things and I'm not available. I, there's been some frustration on, on the part of the press, so I just wanted to kind of, uh, one of the reasons was I wanted to get out of here early so that you had that opportunity so that we could just, you know, let's, let's get this discussion and, and talk about this Monday morning. Um, rather than you trying to chase me all around the halls of the Capitol building, um, I, I thought it would be a good idea for us to get together too. Um, so uh, in the interest of moving things forward, I'm, I'm actually going to step aside here and I'd like to turn this over to Representative Kopp and, and he can share a little bit more about uh, this week and, and uh, what we hope uh, we'll be working towards. <coughs> Representative Kopp, please. Thank you, Dave. Good morning. We really are encouraged uh, by the dedication of all the members of this body to resolve this House organization quickly. I've received calls from um, both sides of the aisle over the weekend talking about concerns of, of forming a caucus, um, getting to work, filing important bills necessary to uh, move the state of Alaska forward, and I'm right there with, with all those members. We want to we wanna work together to get those things done, move forward. Every member of the House has the same goal in mind, and that's to improve the lives of every Alaskan. I'm convinced of that. The divisive climate in our nation with politics, you might think that Republicans and Democrats just can't get along, but that's not been my experience here in the Capitol. The environment is professional, cordial. The people who need to be talking to get, to get this resolved are, and uh, we, we hope to see this come together very soon. It's safe to say that we're all feeling concerns and pressures from our constituents to get the House together and get busy doing the work of the people. It's my sincere hope that very soon we will finalize our organization, get everyone settled, and get the people's business done. But most importantly, coming out of the organization, a team of people that truly reflect the interests of all Alaskans so that everyone is represented and we can respect and work together to find solutions. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Representative Tammy Wilson who will talk about some business going on in the House this week. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kopp. So that, that's a great lead-in. So right now we're kind of in a different time because we don't have the budget in front of us yet. We have the governor has until the 13th to drop a new budget or his amendments. So we really have a unique opportunity, and that is for the entire House to be able to hear presentations that normally is just done in front of House Finance and to be able to ask questions. So the first meeting that I'm going to have will be on Thursday. We're going to have Bruce Tangement, who's now the Commissioner for Revenue, come before us and go over the fall forecast tell us, you know, exactly how the numbers are coming out. We hope to follow that on Friday with the commissioner of DNR and talk about how do they get the throughput, how do we know how much is going to be coming before us, what new projects are up on the slope, what is the revenue that we could be looking at. And we all get to participate, which normally, like I said, it's just 11 of us sitting up there and everybody else is in subcommittee or they're in standing committees and doing other things. And one downfall supposedly I had heard was, well, we might have to do it twice. In these times, we probably will have to do it twice because we are in a unique opportunity right here where we have the revenue that's coming in, we have the 5.25 percent percent of market value that's coming now from the earnings reserve in which the dividend comes out. How do we make all that work? 
that is not going to be an easy task. And we're also going to have a governor, from my understanding, until I see it, I don't know for a fact, but that he's going to have a budget that is very different, the, the layout, than what we've seen before. So that's going to take a little bit of time to be able to do that. So I look forward to that. And then also, it's not just all about um, finance, but also on Wednesday, Representative Sullivan Linner will host um, a meeting on the state's economic outlook that will take place here in the Belts Room at 3 p.m. on Wednesday and then a part two on Friday. And she will actually have the Commissioner of Labor here speaking about jobs and opportunities we have there. So I know it's frustrating for everybody thinking we're just sitting around and doing nothing, but in reality, a lot of things are happening and these informational meetings, I think, will help everybody focus on one of our biggest tasks that we're going to have and that's the budget. Back to you, Representative Del Rico. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate everyone being here, and I do believe we have some time for some questions. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll let our press secretary select some folks yeah, to ask questions. Uh, Greg Knight, KIMY, where are we at with the state of the state of the of address and the participation of the House? Uh, you know, we're, we're still in discussions over, over that. Um, we, do th we do think that there may be, we have to figure out what exactly we have to do to actually have the state of the state. Um, in other words, um, we're looking into that right now. Um, I, in fact, I, I just recently spoke with uh, Representative Edgman of whether or not we actually need to um, <clears throat> suspend the rules in order for that to happen, or can we just agree on it? So we're, we're kind of trying to sort that out a as we go. We're in this, um, I'll say, awkward moment where we have a speaker pro tem, but we don't have the, have the majority organization in place. So. With, that's still, um, we're still determining uh, what we'll do there. Well, I think we'll get through the process and yeah. procedure, and we're really looking forward to hearing yeah. the state of state address tomorrow. So, um, I, and I think Alaskans are as well. Mm -hmm. James Brooks from the Anchorage Daily News. You, um, when we talked with the Speaker Pro Tem last week, he had mentioned that he felt optimistic that, that things would get resolved within 10 days. I'm personally a little more pessimistic, but what's your estimate on the number of days into session it will be before there is an organization? I don't think I can actually pinpoint a specific number of days. Um, you know, um, and, and several of you have probably been involved in negotiations before where you, you speak to people and you, you go back and forth and, and what will work and what won't work and everything. So. To actually put a, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be one to actually, you know, tell anybody. Well, I think four day, uh, day four from today will be the day that we actually do that. I think it's hard to say. More importantly, I think though is that we we still have open conversations with our colleagues, and we're we're certainly speaking. I'd kind of heard a rumor about uh, one particular representative and I having quite a battle and a. Um, a fight and this and that and everything else, you know, and screaming and hollering at each other. I haven't had that experience with anybody yet, and I appreciate all of the representatives um, because of that. But uh, to pinpoint a specific day, I think, would be, would be pretty difficult. Um, I'd, I'd like to think it'll be sooner than later, and that would be my best comment. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Steve Klum, uh, Channel 11. Uh, uh, the first question is for anybody. What would you like to hear from the governor tomorrow during his state of state? And I have a follow-up. Well, I personally want to see his, yeah. <laughs> the budget. I want to know what the plan is. You know, how are we going to do it differently so that we, we're not just talking about a decrease in the budget, but how are we going to make government different and more efficient? And I think that's really what Alaskans want to know is how do we get there after we've tried so many years to find out exactly what the right size of government is. Yeah, I, w I would add to that, um, Steve, I, I think that we're all looking for his plan. Um, we, we have heard that there's going to be uh, some transformational new approaches on delivery of, of state services. I mean, we're all anxious to see what that looks like. Uh, we all want to make sure that the plan uh, considers safeguarding our communities. We want something that is fiscally sustainable, responsible um, uh, budgeting and to uh, responsible to all Alaskans, and uh, we're we're anxious to see how it how it looks. And I would I would say, uh, really, what we what I what I want to really figure out is what we do now with fiscally responsible plan, and how that connects to our long term assessment of what we'll be doing in the state of Alaska, where you know, um, 
my, my private industry experience told me that we do a five-year plan, 10-year, 15, and 25. And I think we want to look at that long-term as well. And, and what does the governor really see as a long-term solution? And uh, my follow-up is for uh, Representative Wilson. You talked um, about how the Republicans and Democrats are getting together. Are, are you going to invite the Republicans to sit at the head with you on this? I'm sorry, the Democrats to sit at the head uh, with you on this? Or is it, are they just invited to sit out here with us? How are you working there? So when I came up with the idea, I actually went to Representative Foster because to even get a room to have the meeting in has normally been by whoever the co-chairs of finance. And I, you know, started with could we at least get that far? And he was absolutely in agreement with it. No, they will be right up at the table with us. Um, at this point, what I said was 10, just because we have 11 seats there, five and five. But anybody who's in the audience, if those seats are filled, will be able to pass up questions. And as they come, and we want to make sure that those are answered. Because again, this is an opportunity that most haven't had because they're busy doing other committee work to be able to be on the beginning talks of it. So no, this is so that everyone in the House can get the information that's going to be needed as we go forward with the budget. Uh, this question is for Representative Tallarico, um, or anyone. Uh, I, I'm also Sean McGuire, Channel 2 News. Um, my question is, is it likely or possible that we could get out in 90 days? And is what, what's the holdup in negotiations? You know, I, I would prefer to get out in 90 days. I don't think there's anyone that wouldn't prefer to do that. I think the idea is uh, um, we will definitely have our work cut out for us, as we do every year, and, and work as hard as we can. I, I can't think of anybody that doesn't doesn't hope to be out in 90 days. Um, I have I have the concern that the longer the delay, that you know, that that could create some log jams for that. But um, primarily, I would I would prefer that we be out in 90 days. And uh, as as far as negotiations go, I've I've had someone ask me, well, who have you been talking to? Well, quite honestly, who have we not talked to? That's probably an easier question to answer um, because we've. A lot of people have been involved, you know, in the negotiation process, and it, and it's still going on. So, um, uh, eventually, every everyone certainly is is involved when we do get to an organization point. But even if we were organized right now, not having the budget until the 13th, you know, we we can't really start subcommittee meetings. We, you know. We could have these meetings that we're talking about, and have the OMB director and and kind of get that part done, but. Normally, about the 13th, we would have been over halfway through.